Alright, the stream is back on. Hopefully this fixes it. Oh, I see stuff happening. Alright, well we are back. Hopefully that is all fixed for you guys. Um, in the meantime, during that little break, we did see Epic Gamer pick up the third blue buff now uh, from Choppa. So Moom has been denied every blue buff this entire game so far. Um, we didn't see any more kills go down, however, so you guys did not really miss too much. Just, you know, pretty much just some farming going down. Um, looks like we're going to see Lee Sin going to actually be picking up that Hex Drinker now, um, as he does have that long sword and does have that no magic mantle. Uh, Ari did pick up her gun, or her revolver as well in middle, so she's kind of, you know, get that definitely get that sustainability that Vladimir has. I mean, in the meantime, we're seeing Epic Gamer go for that dragon, um, picking up the first one of the game at the 15:25 uh, mark, 15:26 mark, um, and also Saucy who do. Uh, after that triple kill, go for that new cigar draw. It looks like he will be building that Robinance now instead of going for that Woda, who, you know, since Woda is extremely expensive now. At least a lot, a lot more expensive than it was. Um, Robinance will definitely provide a lot more uh, damage for him versus, you know, that Woda when Kennen, who is kind of going some weird kind of spec right now, does have a new cigar draw, but since he's not going to go for that Woda early on, um, it's definitely affecting what Salsi's going to buy. Absolutely. Well, this is just like I'm starting to watch the game right now, so this is pretty interesting. You've got Vlad, it looks like he uh, picked up quite a few kills. Um, uh, Salsa is uh, known for his Vlad, so I am not surprised. That's really yeah, good. He picked up a nice triple kill at bot lane where he caught Ari off guard um, and didn't get her down with his ultimate, and then they kind of pinched away at uh, Tarek and Amumu who were left at that tower. So he got that nice triple there that give him, gives him that huge advantage, and now his Robodons. Yep. I, I, just a real quick shout out to Gunrun. He's amazing. He literally took control of my computer, changed about 50 settings in a matter of two minutes, and now everything's fixed. So, pretty impressive. Hey, <laughs> awesome. All right, well, now we're back. Let's do this. Yes, let's do no, it. This isn't a radio stream anymore. <laughs> this, is like, this is like a video stream. All right. I'm gonna let you take it away so you can catch up a little bit, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, we got Shen up here on top. Looks like he was trying to get a gank in on Lee Sin, but um, no, he's pulling off of that. Uh, it looks like a Mumu just recalled from bottom as well. So, looks like they're just, you know, farming. Um, looks like both all the buffs uh, are, are uh, picked up. Um, looks like Kennen must have picked up the blue buff from someone. Yeah, Shen actually did give him that blue buff for top lane. Uh, they get to help out with some extra harass, and as we do notice, the Stuffbox does have that Oracle, so he has been clearing those wards like crazy, denying all the map vision that he can, and really, you know, scare off Chopper from playing any kind of aggressive, um, or well, any kind, yeah, let's just go with any kind of aggressive. English is kind of hard for me. <laughs> this is my la main language. So you've got, uh, you know, the ADs here going very different builds. Um, Corky's going for Trinity Force, which, uh, you know, is common on a lot of Corky players. Some Corky players prefer just to play like, you know, a normal AD and go um, straight for uh, um, IE or uh, Bloodthirster or, um, you know, just more damage. Uh, and then you've got uh, Sivir. She's, she's building into, um, looks like her uh, uh, BT. And she also picked up a uh, red pot, so she's going to be ready for a team fight. I want to be ballsy and say that she's actually not going to be going for that bloodthirst and go for, going for that IE. Uh, that Vamp Scepter is just really strong to have in lane with any harass. You can just heal it back up by attacking all those minions. And uh, so in the meantime, we're seeing Epic Gamer pick up the fourth blue buff <laughs> from Chop in this game here. Um, they don't have any wards on it to see, so Chop will be blind going into this. And hopefully, they will pick up before they come around this corner to take it. And after Mu does pick it up, that is the, I believe, third. Third blue buff of the game for him now, yeah. He did pick up the very first one and has picked up two more since. Yeah, you can tell. He's uh, level 9, and uh, Nat is also level 9, their support on the other side. So he's definitely suffering from uh, XP by not having those blue buffs. Yeah, and Wings of Death, he pushed down that top tower already. Uh, I mean, the first tower of the game for EG, and is still being super aggressive, really forcing uh, Lee Sin to not really be able to farm too well and kind of try to keep a Moomoo -moo in that top lane and maybe go for some ganks to really help out that bot lane to push that tower down or help Salsi out push that middle tower down. And after Moomoo just being super aggressive, looks like he will be going for this tower here as he's just taking out the whole wave of minions as fast as he can. Um, you know, I guess they really want to get that gold and start grouping up and really start some team fights happening as we do see Kennen picking up that Zonius. So that is confusing, that's gonna, but <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be scary. I mean, that on top of you've got a you've got a farmed and a fed Vlad, so it's pretty pretty powerful. I mean, he's got 180. He's about 190 at the 19 and a half minute mark. That's pretty strong. Um, 
So he is going to be doing some major damage. And you got Corky going in here. You got Shen ulting in on Sivir. And is she going to go? Oh, and Corky picks up the kill. And they're going to... You got some star calls going down. <laughs> as oh. you see, Mumu goes in oh, here trying yeah. to go for his extra kills here. As yeah, does not have is he going to hit the bandage? Is he going to... Oh. <laughs> he gets a stun versus stun, and we'll be hitting that advantage right after. Oh, wow. Pop seal Look at those there. heals. Well, they pick her up anyway. For, yeah, he, he tried juke in that bandage toss, but Terry just came in for that stun, and, and it easily made excellent his bandage toss land perfectly onto him, but... Oh my gosh, did you see how fast Severe got bursted down there? That was that was pretty insane. Uh, having that Sheen on Corky really gives him the extra amount of damage, not to mention who Terry who can do a lot of uh, burst damage as well, but... In the top lane, sorry, we're seeing actually I gotta go head to head as Wingsdeath was forced to pop his ultimate to get some stuns onto him, but he does get ignited and does dodge that sonic or, or sorry, does dodge that sonic wave from Lee Sin and it's now just kinda getting away. Um he still has that zone actually does not have that zone up anymore, so he is susceptible to dying. And Salsi now kind of jungling a little bit of its own, trying to get this red buff denied from a Moo or at least from Lee Sin. As Jinte did not see him pulling around that corner, so he does pick that up. Wow, yeah. That was um, that was some pretty crazy stuff on bot lane, and you and you notice when uh, Tarek, Amumu waited for the Tarek stun, uh, which was a pretty good coordination on behalf of that that gank. You know, he definitely wanted to hit the bandage toss um, and chain CC after uh, after the the dazzle. Yeah, definitely. Bandage toss is so easy to dodge. You know, by anyone playing decently smart, just you can see it uh, coming at you. Uh, and as we see, Salsi actually. Stacking his tides of bloods here, maybe trying to catch someone off guard. Um, but there is a war in this bush here in Rivers, so they do see him. And in the meantime, you see Afrimu actually picking up that tower, so he was still being super aggressive, really wanted that tower taken down, and uh, did end up getting it. So that is the second, actually, third tower of the game for Epic Gamer here. We're seeing Shopper not have any tower down now, and we do see Dragon up as well. And uh, we're seeing Lisa come down here, so it looks like EG will need to back off here. Ooh, and, and the charm goes off. down, but uh, no, that's not enough for them to engage on. And you've got Lee Sin coming down from top lane, so they definitely want to engage here on this dragon. They know they have the advantage on the uh, 5 vs 4, and they're going to go ahead and start it. Yeah, again, that pink ward down at the 90 vision. Uh, they know that Wings of Death is still top lane, and they know they easily have this advantage here. And Luma's ult isn't up yet, but it will be up in about you know five seconds here. So if they were to get engaged upon, they would easily have that ultimate to really give them the advantage. And yeah, yeah, did get caught right there with that charm, but just because of how or just how you know low, not necessarily low, but just how much farm that Ari does have at the moment, and having that one death really doesn't have or give it that ability to have the extra AP that she needs to burst anyone down. Uh, and yeah, I was able to survive that having that um you know that Kindle gem. Which I believe at the time was just a health crystal. Health, so. oh, and that's Sonic picking up the uh, the big golem. <laughs> <laughs> what a dick. Yeah. <laughs> I see the Moomoo here actually picking up this Negatron cloak, so it looks like he will be going for more of a magic resist kind of tank, as the only AD that EG really does have is severe. Um, Shen, you know, who can do a little bit of damage, but isn't, you know, a huge contributor. Um, to, in any sort of the way, or any sort of way, and Wings of Death, who does still have those double towards blades, um, and that revolver now, so we will be building in towards that Woda. Um, so we definitely needs to get that match because it's really help out team fights, or he will just be bursted down, like you were saying before. You know, this is one of those tanks who still dies extremely uh, quickly. Yeah, that's right, and you can see that they're picking up a lot of MR. You've got uh, Lee Sin with the Hex, and you're probably going to see Reverie from Amumu, I, I believe, and then he might go into uh, just getting some more uh, MR and tankiness after that. Um, and you do have wards on Baron, so uh, you know they're going to know if something happens there. So they're just kind of just farming. They they are they're pinging blue. They want to make sure they uh, they get that. They um, haven't been able to get blue very often this game. Haven't <laughs> been able to get blue at all this game, pretty much. This is the first blue buff of the game for him there, and uh, you're talking about a Mumu having that magic. So it's looks like he's actually going to be going for that. Um, so he's going for that Shreelas Rumbly, and he's going to go for an Abyssal Scepter. Um, help uh, help him do some extra damage and help out Ari uh, by having that extra 20 pen um, for her. So it's actually you know pretty good item for him, pretty standard item as well. And we see when he's left in bot lane. Uh, I don't think he was seen going no, through No, I don't so think. Oh, someone. there we go. Yeah, I think they see him now. And got some action here going on middle lane. Uh, they're just trading off some damage. Oh, and Ari's recalling. So they're going to they're gonna go in on this as soon as... Oh, and they got the Shen ult on Kennen. Double flash. Oh, just out of range. Oh, oh is he going to hit the Q? He gets it. And that means death. <laughs> and that means death. Yeah, definitely. That was... 
Oh, and wow, he's still going in here, going against Mash, but he does have that zombies up. And oh, oh, up there, so oh, how much? much power. Wow, he gets away with 20 health. Jinte doing a good job there, really saving Corky uh, right there, and also getting them extremely low here. As you see Salsi coming around here, and I don't think they're going to know this coming. Oh, Salsi comes in, Rusev will be going down. But Salsi pop that ultimate on two members of Chapa, will be picking up a double kill here. Actually, sorry, a single here, kill here, as Unstoppable was a jerk and did get that kill on Lee Sin. Um, but wow, yeah, that was that was pretty intense set of fights there. Yeah, that was some excellent play. I mean, you saw them try to get out with uh, with no health, and um, and then they just kind of countered countered in, and then you had Sauls just flash over the wall really aggressively just to get into that fight as quick as possible. Hey, look how tanky Sauls is right now. He's got you know 74 armor, 61 magic resistance, but has 2700 life, and he's only level 17 at the moment. He he just can't be killed right now. I mean. If you get a nice, I guess, chain stun cycle on him, but he does have that patrol pool to get away. But I mean, he's just, he does so much damage and he just doesn't take a lot, you know, having been so tanky. And uh, one thing I kind of want to point out, which it kind of lost its uh, it, its shine right now, is that there was a lot of wards coming out of Chapa, which is really smart. And it really hurts as well because they know that Suplex has that Oracle. Um, they don't have an Oracle at, or on their own team, so they aren't able to clear that vision. But that's kind of one of the things you have to do. Um, actually, we do see the toy with Oracle, but that's one of the things you have to do, you know, when the team has an Oracle and you're in a high stakes game like this, you have to keep warding no matter what. It's really going to put the toy behind, but as long as your team is helping out, um, you can really help keep that vision as well and not really get um, caught off guard too, too easily. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I, oh, here we got, uh, oh, wow. <laughs> that, was <ballsy. laughs> that was really ballsy. Um, I'm actually surprised that that didn't aggro Baron. Um... Yeah, I have to agree. That was actually really, that was really weird. <laughs> yeah. um, but you know, then, you were saying about the wards. I mean, when you get to this point, about 25 minutes, wards and map control make or break games because you have to have vision on Baron. And usually, both teams have Oracle, which means that you're warding, the ward dies, you're rewarding, and it basically keeps going like that until one team loses map control, and the other team then waits for them to return to base, and that's when they start Baron. So it's really important to like click on the support and find out how. How many wards there are, and then it's just usually a ward exchange until they lose vision of Baron. Right, yeah, and that's kind of one of the one of the things about running support is that you really need to run those uh, GP5 yellows. Those are huge for you as a team. Uh, there is this video coming out, or that came out not too long ago, where a guy pretty much just looked at it. You know, oh, having... and you know, like I said, you know, you don't have they don't have vision. They don't know this is going on. They are giving some pings, but they are not sure. And they if they don't have vision on Baron, they can't. Harass. Uh oh, you got. Is he gonna go in for the steal? And, oh! I don't even know if he got his smite off. No, at least he actually doesn't oh, have yeah, smite. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> was unfortunately behind in base and wasn't able to pick that up. I was like, go for the steal with, with what? You can't hit it. <laughs> He's gonna ignite Baron. <laughs> you know, you never know. That could be the most epic steal in the game. Uh, but yeah, now we see EG with this uh, Baron buff gonna be pushing here. And I was saying that there's a video that came out not too long ago where a guy basically did this. He had a, um, a video of a champion um, with yellow GP5s, or GP10, sorry, and GP10 quints, uh, or GP5 quints as well. And then he had another video as well next to it with the exact same thing, but without exercising. Ooh, ooh, and he's got a flash, here. and ooh, that's just the wrong person to kick flash. Oh, and Corky goes down. You got Shen ulting on Vlad. Is he going to get his pull up? Oh, my gosh. And he lives. He lives. That, that life still right there, having that, uh, is it a double water? No, it's just a single water right now, but having that Shen ultimate, that was perfectly timed and was able to save Salsi. And uh, it looks like I wouldn't be able to finish what I was saying since they are going to be pushing for the win here. Yeah. <laughs> As uh, Yat's going to be tanking this first tower, and uh, Salsi is tanking that second one. So it looks like first game will be going to Epic Gamer here, and a uh, very well played match. Yeah, very strong, very strong. You got the, the double AP, you've got. Uh, almost double heal, and uh, that's just really scary. It's hard to uh, burst them down, especially when you got Shen ulting on top, just providing the shield when necessary. Yeah, I don't think Epic Gamer is actually expecting Engage to happen right there because we saw Shen top lane just pushing it out. I mean, he obviously can get in and, and um, you know, be in the fight, but with just where he was, it didn't seem like they were really um, expecting it. Yeah, that was an excellent match. I mean, it was... Um, uh, as I had mentioned before, Mumu is just really susceptible to counter jungling. And when they made that decision to go in at two minutes on the game clock and invade Mumu once the team had left and went to lanes, Mumu at that point was just 
it just he couldn't catch up. He couldn't get back into the game. They started timing his blue. He never got any blues. He fell way behind in levels, and he just didn't have any presence in the game, um, and that just really suffered. Right. So I really have to point out that your screen is actually black at the moment. Um, I just on the stream it is black just to. Yeah, I have it uh, set so that it shows the game. Let me... <laughs> okay, well, people are wanting to hear this this GP story, but um, basically, a guy. So he had two videos, exact same champion, just different sets of runes, different sets of um, masteries, um, and the exact same thing happened every game. But what happened was that the people or the person that had the GP uh, ten, you know, seals and quints, made I believe it was two thousand more gold at the end of the game, at the end of like a thirty minute game, than the other um, person did. Which is extremely huge. Just think of how many wards, how many, um, well, actually, okay, first of all, how many wards you can buy, but not to mention having that extra GP5 early on makes you get your GP10 item earlier. So then you make more money off of that kind of thing. So it kind of snowballs, and it really is one of the things you kind of need to support when, you know, teams start picking up oracles really early on, and you need to keep that map vision um, to really help your team out. Yeah, absolutely.